Welcome to the Grow Your Business podcast. Listen in as we discuss all things business, growth, and marketing with business owners, thought leaders, and entrepreneurs. And now, here's your host, founder of Roundhouse, the creative agency, Saul Edmonds. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Grow Your Business podcast. Today, I'm speaking with Paul Farmer from the Mentorus Group around the topic of taking ownership over that which you can influence. Paul, how are you going today? Hey, Saul, how are you doing? Yeah, really good. We've got um, great to have you on today. Thanks very much. We've um, we'll start before we dive into that topic, which we just went over. I'll just get if you wouldn't mind just telling everyone just a little bit about about you, Mentorus, the uh, uh, history of Mentorus, and then different services that you provide as well. Sure. Can I just, first up? Can I just say thanks for having me on? It's uh, yeah. It's, it's it's nice to be able to uh, to a share my story, but also help add value where I can. You know, in times like this, it's uh, it's an opportunity. If if someone picks up something from a tip that I get, I give, or the quote that I leave, or something that I uh, that I talk about that strikes a chord with them, then for me, that's adding value, and and that's important in in times like this. So uh, so thanks for having uh, having me on. Uh, yes, I uh, I run a business called Mentorus. We do small to medium sized business coaching, strategy, facilitation, uh, work with leaders, helping leaders to to build better leaders. Um, By background, I grew up in a family that was based around a a small business. My mum and dad owned a pharmacy in a town population 800. So it was the number one pharmacy in town, as you can imagine. Uh, So we, uh, growing up in a small, a small town, a small business, gave me uh, an exposure to what small businesses are actually about. Whether, whether they have advice, whether they don't, whether they have people around them, whether they don't, when things get challenging, how people come together. So as a background, that was the environment that I grew up in. I, uh, I'm a qualified accountant. As most people tend to say, it's like you don't, act like an accountant, you don't look like an accountant, you don't sound like an accountant. Um, but um, I saw that as being a, a, a basis on which to build uh, a career. Um, growing up in, in a small country town, moving to Toowoomba, then Brisbane. The first client that I actually worked on in my first job in Brisbane was mum and dad. They were, they were already clients at the business. So, uh, so that they were my first client, which is quite, quite cool being able to continue on yeah. what you've actually grown grown up with um worked in accounting for oh gee um up until 2008 i was working for shell in the uk and then realized that maybe straight accounting wasn't exactly what i wanted and moved into business analysts and forecasting and planning which I which I worked in in the oil and gas industry both in the UK and then back here in Brisbane, worked up until 2015, then decided, you know what I uh, I'd like to be able to do something a little different. We were in the middle of a takeover from Repsol. Most people would know that from when Formula One and Motor GP were uh, racing that they sponsor teams in the in the Motor GP. Um, I spent three months talking to everyone in the business around what their challenges were and, and decided that at the back end of that coaching uh, and business strategy and leadership was what I wanted to do. So since the, the start of 2016, I've been working with business owners, working with business leaders, uh, working with businesses that want to get a clear strategy around what they're doing, how they're doing it and the most efficient and effective way to do that. Uh, so for me, the last four years has, uh, has been a learning experience but it's also given me an opportunity to work with some quality business owners that, that sometimes it's just the little one percenters that, that make such a difference. Mm. And when you, when you're in the middle of everything and things don't tend to be going a hundred percent, there's a lot of noise that's going on, which we'll touch on in a minute, but there's a lot of noise that's going on that may take you away from what is it that I'm trying to achieve. And uh, you know, the bright shiny thing pops up which you know, is quite often and, and tends to be something that takes your eye off the ball. So for me, being able to, to work with business owners to help them stay on that path of this is what I want to achieve. Also having an element of accountability as well. 
Mm. You know, that also is a piece that whether we catch up fortnightly, monthly, whether it's a set time that we that we work together, so many people have said, knowing that we're actually catching up with you tomorrow or the next day or the next day, it means I look at what we we said we were going to do and have we done it? Mm. And yeah. a lot of the time in a small business, you don't have that and you don't have the accountability piece. So um, over the last, say, four and a half years, we've, uh, we've worked with business owners to help them get clear on the direction, but also then help them be able to put that in place. And, and we, you know, we've helped business owners double their business, turn over from 60000 a month to 230000 a month. And some of those stories that, uh, that you think, but also other people that ensuring that their businesses weren't in a position that was, that was stellar, helping them recreate what they wanted to do, get focused and actually drive it forward. So again, it may not be you, you go, you know, 200, 300% uh, rise in turnover or profit or whatever, but just giving people the ability to be able to have a business that is more stable than it was before we actually had those conversations. Yeah, that's right. So for me, for, for me that that's the space that I love to be in and I love to work with people that, that want to create change and, and add value by not having to take, I call it squeezing more out of the lemon. So not having to do more to be able to create value within the business that they've got. Mm. So sometimes it's an independent perspective that, that gives people the ability to see it. It doesn't have to be uh, rocket science. It doesn't have to be complex. It can be simple and little things done well create and add value. Yeah. I think it's certainly, you know, I think the value of having, having someone like yourself in, in people's corner and small business can't be underestimated. You know, I think the, you know, it's very, I'm like, I'm sure you'd agree that being a business owner, but it's, I guess, especially in small business can be very isolating and having, um, and most people, I would imagine anyway, like we're in, um, in a different boat, I suppose, having, having some experience with that, um, and knowing what you do as well, but like a lot of people have no experience or, or may not necessarily see the value because they've never been exposed to it of having somebody else in their corner to, you know, to advise, listen, and all the different things that um, actually come along with that. But just moving into like to the main topic, I guess the first thing I just wanted to ask, which is, which is more of a, a comment too, I suppose, is like this, how relevant is this particular topic, especially right now? Like it's always, it's always relevant, but I think like that idea of, you know, taking ownership over things that you, um, like you can influence, obviously also implies, um, uh, you know, the other things that you can't influence too. And that's very relevant yeah. right now. It becomes more, it, it's become more relevant because there's more noise. Mm. So in terms of, you know, thinking about the things that you can control and influence. Um, I was talking to, uh, to a guy who a couple of a month ago um, had gone before isolation and before things had, had, uh, had escalated. He, uh, he, he went fishing off, off uh, offshore fishing, turned his phone off, came back, got in the signal in the signal and the, the um, the messages popped up and he had a couple of messages from his mate that, uh, that said, Oh, have you seen that New South Wales is in lockdown and Melbourne's in lockdown? And I said, so how does that impact you? And he went, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, do you live in New South Wales? No. Do you live in Melbourne? No. So how does that impact you? And he went, Oh, well, it doesn't. So, you know, the amount of noise that's, that's around at the moment, the, the, the constant, 24 seven TVs on updates every hour. There's an update, 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 which is really important. But a lot of the time that may not have a, have an impact on you and what you're doing. Mm. And at the end of the day, can you control it? A lot of it, you can't. Mm. It's, it's, it's things that when there is information that you need and, you know, we'll touch on that in a minute, but in terms of, are you able to control a lot of, what happens in the media? No, you know you can things things that you can control um, are you know the way you think, the way you behave, and the way you act. You know, I, I use a, a uh, I don't know whether you can see this, but 
We're going to give this a crack. E plus R equals O. An event will happen. Then you have your reaction, which will give you an outcome. Mm. A, lot of, a lot of the time, the event, you, can, you don't have control over that event. What you do have control over is your reaction. So if you can own the reaction you have to what's happening, then that gives you more of a chance to get a better outcome, a better result. The result that you're looking at uh, at, at trying to achieve. Mm. Uh, so when when things happen that are outside of your control, it's like acknowledging that that they've happened. But it's like, well, I can't I can't change that. I can't influence that. I can't control that. So if I get frustrated that I can't control that, then I'm just going to keep getting frustrated because I can't do anything about it. Yeah. What I can do is I can own how I react to what happens. And that's the, the power. That's the power of owning your reaction to what happens to be able to go, if, if something happens in your business and it means that you have to change the way you're doing things, then you either keep going the same way but get frustrated that things aren't happening or you go, well, I need to change this. What do I need to change it to? Acknowledge that, that it needs to change and then you can go, right, what do I need to do to go forward? Yeah. So, I mean, that's a little bit of a segue I suppose into something else that I just wanted to um, uh, just to get your thoughts on too, is that when, when people say, or when people are talking about dealing with the facts, right. And people go, you know, the facts for, uh, for some people and some circumstances are very universally accepted as that. These are the facts. Sometimes they can be subjective depending on who you talk to. So it, what what's your opinion on what a good way is to properly discern like the facts, you know, or, or what that even oh. <laughs> even means? So the the barbecue conversation, <laughs> the barbecue conversation. Is yeah, but they're always everywhere. but they're always true, right? <laughs> oh, hundred percent. And so yeah. the interesting thing is, there's generally always one person who is the expert on everything, at most. Now, now we do social distancing. So barbecues, you know, they're Zoom, Zoom barbecues. There's an idea. Mm. Um, but in terms of the, the conversations that everyone tends to have, the challenge that we have is that most of, let's take the stimulus packages, for example. Most of that, it depends on every single person's situation is different. The fact that a mate said that he, that he thinks that I should be able to get it, then, you know, do I go to a hairdresser to get my car serviced? No. Mm. So in terms of looking at it, in, in where do you get the source of truth from? Is it from the, uh, I mean, there's, there's uh, fact sheets that come out from the uh, Treasury, from the ATO, from, and they're updated. Um, you know, we were in a meeting the other day and, and, you know, they're updated a couple of times a day, a couple of times a week the latest information, where do we need to get the best information from? The official sources. So where we, you know, looking at the state government, they're putting out notifications. You're looking at uh, the federal government, they're putting out notifications. So it's, it's looking at ways to get the facts and make sure that how, look at it and go, how does that relate to me? Mm. You know, some of the stimulus packages, it's, it's, do I, do I cl classify as someone who would be able to get JobKeeper? Well, if, if my mate gets it, then I should get it. But my situation could be totally different. So rather than dealing with the speculation, it's, well, where do I get the, the, the best source of information from? It's the official source. So it's from the Treasury. It's from the state government. It's in this situation, where, do we, where are we able to know what the restrictions are around Easter? You know, thirteen hundred dollar fines, sixteen hundred dollar fines. It's you know, what? Where do we get the information to know what it is that we uh, that we are able to do? Yeah. And what happens if we if if we if we don't do that? Well, we go to the state government, or we go to the the areas where the official information is, because Chinese whispers. Ever heard of that? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah yeah. He said. He said. She said. So, you know, every time, every time you get a bit of information that's come from someone else, 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 you end up 
in a situation where there's an element of truth mixed up with an element of untruth to to then dilute the truth in the conversation. So where do we need to get to? We need to go back to the source and get your information from there. From a financial point of view, going to your accountant. They're getting the information from the source. So deal with them. And as I say, in this time, your accountant is the person, and most of them are absolutely slammed at the moment with everything that's going on, but they're the ones that are getting the regular updates. So recommendation is to speak to your accountant regularly to find out what it means to you and, and how, how it's going to impact your business because they're getting the, set, the source of the truth from the source of the truth. Yeah, yeah, and I suppose that then applies to, you know, also discerning the facts in in any instance. You know, if you're talking about your business too, of course. So, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, you might hear that an, a supplier is running short on stock, but that's come from four different people, and it might have just been that those four different people turned up on the same day to get a bucket load of stock, and there wasn't enough to go around. But the next day, they got a shipment in. You know. What do you do? You ring your supplier and say, "How are you going? How are we going? We're looking at getting an order." And they go, "Yeah, cool. We just got a we just got a shipment of stock in yesterday. Mm. We we're a little bit short the day before, but yesterday yesterday it came in and we're all we're all good. So come on in." Yeah, completely. But if you had listened, to, if you had listened to the four people previously, you would have gone, "Oh, chicken little sky's falling. I got I got to organise <laughs> another way of trying to get all my stock." It's like, well, you know. So in times like this, in terms of looking at communicating with people it's go to the source ring direct ring your suppliers directly ring your clients directly speak to them because you know you might hear from someone else that someone's doing it a little bit tough or someone you know they were going to do something but they didn't do it and all of a sudden you're throwing your your own assumptions in there mm. and you fil in your filters it's go straight to them and say just want to check in to see how things are going yeah and uh and then and then you'll find out what the story is as opposed to hearing it from someone else who's heard it from someone else who's heard it from someone else who's added a little bit of their own story into it to 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 make it not so uh truthful so to speak yeah and uh, so let's um um so what uh, so what are the well uh, let's call them uh top tips for now but we'll call them like or or, or key things that you would consider um really important about like the topic um, that we're talking about, about taking ownership over those things that you can influence. What are the key yep. things that, you know, if you're speaking to somebody and saying the most important things that you really have to consider, I mean, what would they be? Um, I'd probably say three, three areas. One is your circles. So the people in your circle, whether it be yourself, your family, um your team if you've got a business and you've got a team plus also the networks that you actually have as well so taking taking that and going how can i connect you know we talk about connection at the moment how can i connect to make sure that those people are a feeling feeling the love um but also be they're aware of what's going on in your circles and also you're aware of what's going on in theirs because at the moment, one of the biggest currencies is trust. And being able to build that with the people in your circles means that you're able to gauge where that level of trust is and how you can continue to add to that trust bank um, over a time which may be a little bit challenging. Mm. You know, if, uh, if you're helping people in your circles, then, as I said, talking to a guy yesterday, rang up, supplier said it's going to be... A, this cost rang up four days later and they said, Oh, we've, the price has gone up 50%. You know, it's like, well, where's the trust in that piece there? Because at some stage going forward, then when the world gets back to, back to a, uh, a more normal state, then that supplier comes to you and says, Oh, you know, can we do this? And you're going to go, well, hang on in a time where, where we were, we were, in need, you bump this up on us. How's that? How's that helping everyone? It's it. it the trust level at the moment is uh, is huge. So for me, looking at everyone in your circles and going, how can I connect with them 
to make sure that I understand what's going on in their circles, but also what's ha- they can understand what's happening in mine. Mm. So look, looking after your circles is, is for me, is one. The second one um, is your customers, whether it's existing customers or prior customers or potential customers, is at the moment is adding value and giving them the customer experience that, that has them wanting to work with you. If you've got to add extra value to what you're currently doing with, with businesses, then now's the time to show that you actually care about them as a business owner and as a business, but also as a person as well. Mm. So it's just that little bit extra in a time when that they may just need that. And it may allow them to be able to hear from someone that they haven't heard from. It's like, oh, actually, you know what? That's given me a bit of a boost. Boom. I can... I can go on and, and I don't feel like I'm the only one that's going through this. Yeah. So look at your customers and then cash flow is the other one. Understand your business. You know, having spoken to a number of business owners recently, it's they didn't really understand their business from a financial perspective. And they'd always, you know, ostrich head in the sand. It's like, it's okay. Well, you know, things will, things will continue to roll in. But when, when they started to be challenged around, well, maybe it's not as consistent as it was, they weren't fully aware of, of what was driving their business and whether it actually had a, a, um, a, a forecast of, of what their cash position might look like for the next couple of months. Mm. So for, for me, getting, getting an understanding of what your business looks like over the next two to three months is going to allow you to then look a little bit further to say, well, what can we do now in the next couple of months to be able to then, uh, you know, survive this period, but also grow into the next period. Yeah, that's right. So you've got that. So for me, your circles, um, your cash flow, and also looking at your customers. Yeah. So that human element, of course, is always, is always important. And like you were saying, even um, like right now, even more so, how have you found in your experience, like considering that in these particular times at the moment, people can't meet face to face or they're not meeting to do the, the same sort of things in a business sense that they were previously. How have you found people's um, take up of doing that all of a sudden, like a lot of people overnight via things like Zoom or Skype? Um, have you found that people have been, you know, have um, have jumped onto that well, and they're using it um, sort of well, or they've been? Well, the, uh, the interesting thing, the interesting thing is the fact we've been we've been forced to use it. Hmm. You know, it's not a you can you can adapt it if you choose to. Um, you know, most businesses now that aren't able to meet face to face, then how do you? still get their face-to-face interaction where you aren't able to leave your house or you're not able to travel outside your suburb or so, you know, a lot of people are now looking at online as an opportunity to be able to still get face-to-face conversation with people, but not physically have to be there. Um, You know, it it also allows people to to not have to travel to work. Mm. So for example, you have people that travel, an hour, an hour and a half to get to work each way every day. So to be able to work from home, that technically creates another hour and a half times two in, uh, in your day that you're able to then add other things into your day, which previously you weren't able to do. Mm. So whether that's being able to go for a walk as a family for half an hour, be able to spend time, more time with the kids to be able to add in an element of here's three hours a day that we can actually, we can add into what we're doing. Mm. So, you know, some, some people are now seeing this platform as a way to create efficiencies in the way that they operate. And I was on a, um, I was presenting on a, on a, a call last night and there were a couple of people that have said, well, rather than having to go to people's places to have that initial conversation, they're now going to do it via Zoom because it means that 
wherever that person is, they don't have to be at home. They can be in their office. They can be somewhere, but they can actually have that call, initial call, to be able to have a face-to-face conversation, whereas previously they would have had to have been either home or at the office or it was a set time, whereas now you can, you can pull up on the side of the road as long as you're within a safe distance so you're not going to get fined $1,300. But you can, uh, you can pull up on the side of the road and you can do a Zoom call. Yeah, no, right. I think it's certainly yeah. going to, yeah, I think it's, it, it'll, it'll certainly, um, it'll certainly make a lot of people, like you were saying, think about this being a different and potentially new way that they do things more, you know, that they actually yeah. utilize these services more. And it's certainly, I mean, in many instances, you know, it might actually be for the better. Like it's always, it's always great. Like you can't be meeting somebody personally. There's always there's something extra special about that, but yeah. this is the next best thing, really. Well, you also look at teams as well. You know, do you do you have a, a Monday morning team meeting or a Friday morning team meeting, or you know, where you've got people that are in different areas? Previously, it would have been a phone hookup or whatever. Now, you've got the ability to be able to go. Well, you know, if we're going to have a, for example, in in, in the trade industry, if, if if you want, if you've got multiple sites, you can just jump on and do a toolbox meeting on multiple sites, and everyone doesn't have to be in the same spot. Mm. You know, if, if you've got multiple multiple sites, uh, or you've got a business that has multiple offices, then you can still have people on a, on a call, and you can still have your weekly sales meeting. You can still have all of these meetings, but now you, you have a platform where you can actually see see each other which gives that connection, hmm. which is when you, don't, when you don't have the ability to be face-to-face and you're not getting that connection, then the opportunity to have a platform like this, which means that you can have, you know, you can have, I heard of a, a webinar last, not last week, the week before, that, you know, it had 600 people on it. Wow, is that right? You know, yeah. <laughs> so being able to have a platform, where where you where you are able to be in front of a, a bunch of people, and but not physically have to be there, it it you know it, it adds value to to your business because you can you know if you're meeting someone for a, a, an initial, you know, in my case for example, if I'm meeting someone for an initial twenty minute chat, then this is a, a perfect way for me to be able to get to know them for them to get to know me. Yeah, you know I, I could do it by Zoom, I could do it by phone call. But then also doing from a, a coaching strategy perspective, you know, we can, we can do things like this and it means that I can then work with people in the UK, in the States, all over Australia. It doesn't have to be physically face to face. Yeah. And I think like a lot of people though too, like I, I've, I've certainly had the experience of using Skype and Zoom anyway quite a bit. But, and, and for... For like a lot of people, I mean, like yourself too. I'm, I'm sure it's been still a, a, even up until now, it's still been a reasonably normal part of how you do business in in some instances. But yeah, yeah I think it's it's a, it it'll certainly have some sort of cultural shift in how people do things, and um, hopefully, hopefully for the better. So, um, just another quick question about. Um, about being a leader too, like say, given um, that other topic we were talking about, about the facts and how you, first of all, discern the facts and how do you then, um, in the case of being a leader, how do you then, or, or what are some you know good ways or things that you've experienced being a leader, people then giving the right information in the right way, especially when they've got, um, well, not necessarily a bigger team, but even like any any size team, and the importance of being a leader in that instance. I'm not talking specifically about like the current um, uh, COVID-19, but that or any information, being the person that actually provides the right information to people in the right way as a leader. So, I mean, to, to me as a, you know, a leader's, a leader's clients are his team. So in terms of as a leader, 
my, my job is to ensure that, uh, that my team gets everything they need to be successful because if they're successful, then I'm going to be successful. Uh, so in terms of looking at where you get your information from, keeping them regularly updated, um, but also having an element of vulnerability as well to say, you know, I, I don't have all the answers, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll keep you up to date with everything that's, uh, that's going on. And when I get information that, uh, that is, um, that is suitable, then I will, I will keep you up to date because that'll allow you to make better decisions in your circles. Um, ensuring that, uh, that, you know, communicating to your, to your team often. Mm. listening to them, giving them an opportunity to actually have a conversation about what's happening in their circles. You mm. know, we, we can't assume that everyone's the same. People handle, handle situations differently. So just taking, you know, there's uh, guys that I know, they, you know, prior to uh, times like this, they, they would go and have a, a steak with their, with their leaders uh, one-on-one once a month. Um, and, uh, and it was just an opportunity to be able to check in with them and find out what was happening in their circles and what, you know, as a, as a leader, am, what can I do to help you? Yeah. And so if, if that's finding out the information that people would need to be able to understand a situation or things like that, it's, it's asking that question as a, two questions as a leader, how do you want me to be? And also what is it that I can help you with now? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think they're awesome, all because we yeah, don't have all the answers. Human, yeah, and just having that, you know, outside of all all those things too, like a, having once again that human connection and and finding about how how people are too, you know, because that all those yeah. things all those things really play into the into the big picture. But just in um in sort of um, wrapping up, I suppose. Would you would you be able to give everyone listening some of your what you would consider to be some really great top tips, like for businesses who might be considering utilizing the services of a mentor, I mean, such as yourself, or who've who've never um, specifically people who've never had any experience? Like, what would you sort of say? What are some really good top tips? So using or having someone in your uh, corner who has a background in business, in finance, in strategy, uh, in coaching, um, it's, it's reassuring um, to, to have someone that, uh, that you can actually sit there and, and bounce stuff off, especially when you don't have it in your business. Um, and a lot of, a lot of time that the business owners, it's, it's not about having someone else do it. It's about having someone else help you see that there is a way forward and there are steps to go through to be able to create what you're trying to create. Mm. Um, you know, we're, a lot of the time we're technically very good at what we do. We may not necessarily see all of the options, whereas someone who's not in your business can help you see a number of options. But, I mean, I use the, I use the phrase pump your tyres up. Sometimes you just need that element of someone else going, you know what you did there, that's awesome. Or there are ways to keep moving forward. Here are some of the things that we can work on. So to use a coach, a mentor, um, an advisor, it's, it's to have someone to be able to walk through and step through your business to be able to, to keep moving forward. You know, the feeling of being stuck and just not knowing where to go and what to do without having direction, you get frustrated because you don't have all the answers. Well, to be fair, we don't either, but we, uh, we're able to come at your challenges at a, from a different direction and from a background of experience and possibly having, having experienced what you're experiencing or having had clients that have experienced what you are going through at the moment. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's an opportunity to be able to have someone walk beside you and help guide you. They won't do it for you, but they will help guide you towards getting a, getting good results. Mm. Yeah, no, that's really great. Uh, they're, they're all yeah. in, incredibly important um, sort of relevant points, I think, Paul. And um, thanks so much for sharing them there. I'll ask you now if you would be so kind as to as to give us a um, 
a quote uh, a quote that you that you really like that you feel might be relevant or really that you just um, sort of like that you'd like to share with everyone a quote there's a lot of, lot of good stuff floating around at the moment but for me I like to, I like, and I use this quite a bit, is that uh, 95% of what ifs never happen. Mm. So look at what you can control and control it now, yeah. which ties into what we've just talking about. So 95% of what one. ifs never, never happen. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, very, very good. The, um, yeah. So once again, I'd just like to say thank you so much, Amir, you know, for coming on and, and um, you know, sharing all those different things around the topic that we were talking about today. I'll, I'll just ask you also, can you just let everyone know about um, like some of your details, how people could learn more about you and um, Taurus Group and, uh, and the best way to get in contact with you as well? Sure. So uh, my website is mentorusgroup.com.au. Uh, I'm on Instagram. Uh, I'm on Facebook. Um, my e- email address is on my website or it's strategy at mentorusgroup.com.au. Uh, and yeah, happy to chat with anyone about uh, anything they'd like to uh, bounce off me. Um, yeah, anything that, uh, that would help people be able to keep moving forward in their business, then yeah, happy to, uh, to have a a free 20 minute chat about, uh, about what it is that we might be able to help with and go from there. No obligation, no judgment, just have a chat and see if there's something that we can help with. Sounds pretty good to me. So with Thanks. that in mind, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much again, Paul. That was um, fantastic. That's actually it for today, guys. Thanks so much for listening once again to our podcast. Before we go, please leave your feedback as well as any suggestions for topics you would like us to discuss also in any future episodes. And thank you again for listening to the Grave Business Podcast and we'll see you again soon. Bye, guys. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of Grow Your Business. Have a great day and we'll see you.